Hello everyone, my name is Holly and today we are going to do a reading um, and vocabulary exercise on mumpreneurs, mumpreneurs, basically like entrepreneurs, but they are mums or they are moms, mompreneurs, mumpreneurs. So that is what we will be talking about. So we will start out, uh, we'll have a, a warm up discussion, then we will <clears throat> go over and look at some key words and make sure we know the key words. And then we will read, the, read an article about mums or moms. And then we will look, make sure we understand what we read. We'll look at phrasal verbs and we, then we will discuss the article. So that is the plan for this evening or this morning, or this afternoon, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> so, all right, again, my name is Holly, and I will be uh, <clears throat> uh, facilitating the class on mumpreneurs. So, All right, um, a little about me. My, um, of course, my name is Holly. I am located in Idaho in the US and I uh, have been teaching English since 1994. I started out in South Korea. I taught there for just under two years. And then I went to the States and taught in the States for a little bit while I was getting my graduate degree. Then I went to Finland. I went to Finland for a nine month month contract and I stayed for two years. And that's just a little bit about me. I started uh, teaching online in 2006. I started here at Verbling teaching online in 19 uh, in September. So about seven, eight months ago. <clears throat> all right. Looking forward to working with you all as we um, discuss mumpreneurs. I wonder if people are having problems getting in the hangout I did when I first started. So that might be the situation. So uh, you are welcome to uh, join the class. <clears throat> so what is a mumpreneur? A mumpreneur is very similar to an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is a small business person, a person who is in business for themselves. So that is what that is. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we can go ahead and get started. Um, waiting for people to show up. Um, Again, my name is Holly, and I will be uh, teaching this lesson on, uh, it's a reading about uh, mothers who are in business for themselves, and their main motivation is so that they can have the flexibility to uh, be with their children. And so that is basically the main idea of the Hello. Okay, so um, anyway, the discussion today is on a mumpreneur. What do you think is a mumpreneur? What are the challenges of being a mumpreneur? So a mumpreneur is a mother who runs a home business or a business uh, basically runs a who has started a company has run the company and uh, they're also a mom they're, many times their main motivation is to be have the flexibility to be close to their kids uh, sometimes their enterprise has to do with children so that they can be um, with their children so the, what are the challenges of being a mompreneur 
um, many, there's many different types of challenges. Hello, Kako, how are you today? Hello, Kako. Hello? Hello? Hi, teacher. Nice Hi. to see you. Nice to see you. Where is everyone? <laughs> Did you have problems getting into the Hangout? Did you have difficulties getting into the Hangout, Kako? My my computer is is very slow, teacher. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I it took me three times to get into the class, and I started on time, but still we have few people here. So I was just wondering if I was uh, not the only one that was having problems. So you have a slow computer. All right. So that's fine. <laughs> so, well, we may or may not have a. Uh, you might. Have, this might be a one-to-one -one lesson with an audience, <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or you might. Uh, well, it looks like it's it's a it's a, it's at least it's a uh, two people here. Hello, Wellington. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you. How are you, Holly? Oh, very good. Very good. It's nice to see you. So. Nice to see you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we're we're going to do a reading exercise on mumpreneurs. So what do you think is a mumpreneur? Hi, Diana. Everybody's coming in just a little bit late today. <laughs> so, so hi, Diana. Sorry, sorry. Oh, not a problem. Not a problem. You came in two seconds after everybody else. So not. not a problem. Oh, okay. Not a problem. <laughs> yeah. I started on time, but nobody else came. So. So how are you? Oh, fine. Well, uh, right. I'm cold because here in Bolivia it's raining a lot, but very good. Oh, is it? <laughs> uh, it? Does it rain quite often in Bogota? It seems like every time, oh, yes. half the time. Every day. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. And what's the weather like in uh, in so Wellington? You're in Sao Paulo. Sao yes. Sao Paulo. Yes. What's the yes. weather like there? It's good. It's good now. I think uh, the uh, is about uh, 25 degrees. Mm. Yes, yes. It's good. It's good. It's warm. At uh, it's night, but uh, it's warm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And Kako, how about you? Um, you're near Rio, right? So, what's the weather like there? Yeah. Yesterday. It was rainy at night, uh -huh. but but today it was sunny, and now in this evening is warm. It's nice. It's a nice weather, teacher. Mm -hmm. Well, good, good, and it's also fairly nice here in Idaho. We had a high today of 25. And our low today is 10, so so we're doing quite well. Um, so here uh, in here, here in Rio, we never never have um, 10. It, it's that's always that's too cold for you guys, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a that's a high for us during the winter time. <laughs> so. So, um, and, and yeah, uh, yesterday, according to uh, the Weather Underground, yesterday it was 0 0.03, so it was it was freezing at night. So, so Whoa. Right. Whoa. yeah. And Colombia, though, I, one of the reasons I'm so intrigued with Colombia is because even though it rains a lot, you average about 20 degrees, right, Diana? Oh, here is. Uh... I, I don't know it's um, complicated because maybe in the in the mornings it's very warm but in the night it's cold maybe tomorrow is 
a warm all the day, um, mm-hmm. and, and then another day is cold. Uh, it's different. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is serious. Um, I, I I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's complicated to define the <laughs> the climate in Bogota. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. I need to to um uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, keep uh, have my jacket, jacket and coat all the day because I don't know when when uh, can it rains oh. or when is the sun. It's complicated to find that. <coughs> okay, so what time when when it when it's when you say it's cold, what is the temperature? In this moment, I think it's. Ten, I think. I think maybe ten or eight in this moment. Uh huh. In the mornings, maybe uh, sometimes when it's very cold, um, five. It depends. Okay. Wow. All right. All right. Well, let's go ahead and 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 uh, talk about this. Um, uh, what do you think is a mumpreneur? So, Kaka, what is your guess? What is a mumpreneur? I I don't know, teacher, but uh, I guess that is something related with in entrepreneurship. Uh huh. Yes, it is. You are absolutely correct. So, uh, Diana, what do you think? So, it's related to um, an entrepreneur. Can you can you kind of guess based on the what based on this word what it could be? Uh, I haven't uh, heard the that word uh, before. It's new for me, but I read the the context of the class. Of uh-huh. the class. <laughs> uh-huh. It said about uh, that is. Uh, a, mo- a modern mom who is, is the bold um, mom and uh-huh. uh, in pre- in pre- I don't know how to say that. Yeah, who is an uh, entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. So, entrepreneur. Yeah. Okay. Entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Yes. Entrepreneur. Yeah, it's the bold, the bold things at the same time. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's a mom or a mum. Mum is British English. Mom is American English. But a, who, a mom who is an entrepreneur. So, Wellington, what, yes. is, an, what is an entrepreneur? Entrepreneur um, are people that uh, um, start a, a company uh-huh. or, yes, or independent job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, founders of a company, they they might be self-employed, but they um, but they uh, do not work for other people. They work for themselves. Yes, Excellent. O- only for the clients. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, they work for the clients exactly. <laughs> they, <laughs> they they don't actually. They still have bosses. And that's their clients. It's for for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> They are a lot of bosses. Uh-huh. <laughs> bosses. Yeah, it, it, uh, being one myself, you have to keep it straight. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, all right. Um, so, uh, Kako, what do you think the challenges? Uh, what do you think the challenges are of being a mompreneur? After, after our introduction. I think um, a mom, mompreneur mm-hmm. is a mom that uh, when is parenting her her children mm-hmm. she dedicates to to the work to a job to mm-hmm. to to her business uh-huh I think the challenges is is in conciliating 
but uh, conciliating the different responsibility responsibilities on one hand educate and take care of her children and on the other hand work and um, Uh, make a living. Make a living um, uh -huh. from their from their mm -hmm. job uh, th yeah. from her production. Mm -hmm. Okay, you you said conciliating. Um, it, it's a a word I've not heard before used this way. Um, I would say juggling uh, instead of you know where you are trying to jug both uh, juggle both mothering and a, and career and work and and mothering so that's what I would use instead of conciliating but that is I think the biggest problem of every mother <laughs> regardless of their whether they're entrepreneurs or working so, uh, uh, yes. Mothering is the parenting uh, related uh, to their mother. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, mother, yeah. Mother. Yeah. Mother. Mothering. Uh, so if you say mothering, it's basically what you're you're parenting. Yeah. Um, Diana, what do you think is one of the challenges of being a mompreneur? I think the, the most uh, important uh, challenge is the management of, of, of her time. Mm -hmm. uh, time. She needs to, to give time for, for her kids and uh -huh. for, for the work. And it's uh, a, difficult, a difficult activity. It's not easy to learn to manage the, your, your time in different activities uh, at the same time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I, I agree that that's a, a, that would be a um, challenge for many uh, um, entrepreneurs who are mothers. Yes, definitely. And Wellington, what do you think is a challenge for a mompreneur? Um, yes, a lot of it. <laughs> Uh, time is like um, like it was said uh, juggling uh, the the work and the work in the company in the and, uh, and the uh, raise uh, their 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 children's her her children's I think uh, is a good challenge. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we, uh, in Buffy, uh, in Buffy activities, <laughs> there are the tears, but uh, are they are uh, different? Mm -hmm. They are different. Uh, when a child uh, is uh, sick. Uh, she needs to to uh, take uh, to take to take the the, the the child to the um, doctor um, and because she's uh, it, it's uh, it's difficult to to um, to be uh, able for the company or so, something like that. Mm -hmm. Something like this. There yeah. are a lot of challenges. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. It is, and I think I think juggling is the best best word. Uh, Kako just put this link on for what juggling is. <laughs> so, and and that's I think how a lot of people feel. They have. Um, all, you know, juggling life. They have all these different things in the up in the air, and they're trying to keep them all, <laughs> all up there. That's and I think, ma, ma, <laughs> yeah, and that's that's why we use that word juggling. Um, that in that respect, you know, it, it, this is an example right here. You know, she's got 
um, like she's got, you know, I guess her piano, her music, her children's <laughs> hobby, housework, groceries, another child's hobby. I don't know, even know what this is. <laughs> so, yeah. It's a camera. I don't know why. <laughs> so, and I, I think, I, I think, I mean, men have to do this as well, don't they? Yeah. No, I, I think. Uh, um, Male, male, uh, masculine brain is not uh, <laughs> able to do that. <laughs> oh, only, only in the streets. You don't only have a lot stage. of <laughs> On the stage. Yeah, how about a single father, though? A single father might have to do it. <laughs> so, you know. Like I think I think of that. Have you guys did? Have you guys heard about the the couple who had uh, quadruplets? Do you guys know what quadruplets are? No. Uh, okay. Yeah, so you, the, the multiple. Uh, basically, quadruplets. Four, 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 four children four born in one. Wow! Yeah, four, but, in, in, at once, born yeah, at once. And there's a there's a father who ha had uh, his wife had quadruplets, and I guess the pregnancy was wonderful, and she was really really healthy. But apparently, right after the birth, um, she passed away, and she died. And so here, this man is he's he's left with four babies <laughs> by himself. So I'm sure he's going to have to juggle unless he's, he finds a wife or something like that. It's so. a mission. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right. So let's, let's go on. What we're going to do, we're going to read an article about this uh, mumpreneur idea. But before that, we're going to uh, talk about uh, some vocabulary words. So let's match the underlying words with their correct definition below. So I will go ahead and read the definitions right now. So we have A, available in a store. B, balance. C, feeling that you are in control of your life, health, etc. D, showing that you believe you are superior to everyone. E, speaking or behaving towards someone as if they are stupid. F, suitable for both males and females. And G, very tiring. So those are the, the definitions. So let's go ahead and, and read the sentences and see the words that are underlined. Uh, let's see if you can uh, find the correct definition. So let's start. Wellington, can you read number one? Okay. Well, if you have a very, sorry, if you have a very busy job, it can be hard to juggle work and family life. Yeah. So what we've already talked about what to juggle means, but with these definitions, what do you think they would be? In, in this case, is if, if you have a verb, it can be hard showing that you believe you are balanced. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So it's balance. So if you are juggling, you are balancing. Yeah. <laughs> All these things up in the air. <laughs> so. Um, Diana, number two. The boss always speaks in such a patronizing way. She must think we are stupid. Yeah, and this, instead of, some people say patronizing and other people say patronizing. So patronizing. I, I say patronizing. I'm not sure which is correct, though, because I've heard them both ways. Oh, okay. So um, yeah. So what do you think patronizing way a uh, patronizing would be? Patronizing. I think uh, showing that you believe you are superior to everyone. It's a, oh, it's another one. Oh, it's another one. Oh. <laughs> um, no. Speaking or behind towards someone as if they are stupid. Yeah. 
So, so if say for example, if a person patronizes you, um, you you go away from that going, did that person really talk to me like that? Uh, they talked to me like I was a child. What what was going on? You know, um, my sister, uh, she was sending her kids to a daycare, and um, they were quite small and she felt like they were patronizing her and these are ladies that she'd known for a, a while through her work and they were just you know saying to her things like welcome to motherhood and just, my sister's like what I've been a mother for five years now why are you saying this to me so, uh, I understand okay yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah so usually it's when people patronize you you're like really confused like why did she just why what 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 did what just happened there so, so. Yeah. um Kako, number three Alice comment comments are very condescending she obviously thinks she's better than everyone everyone else. Condes condescending. Teacher I think it is uh, letter D, showing that you believe you are superior to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. That is what it is. Um, co condescending is, uh, it's basically like talking down to other people. Um, uh, say, for example, a person who co is condescending might be maybe somebody who's really well educated and they use vocabulary words that they know other people won't know. <laughs> okay. Um, we have in Portuguese um, a, fa a false cognate of this word. Oh yeah. Because, because of that, I was confused. <laughs> okay. What What does it mean in in, in uh, Portuguese? Uh, to be to be very uh, real um, permissive in 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 relation to what uh, what other people attitude to be. Wow. Is, is the antonym of strict. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So so opposite of strict. Yeah, that's very different than condescending. Um, condescending is it's it's usually the way a person ta uh, behaves towards someone else, and um, sometimes people don't realize they're being condescending, but they're it's a, it's a it, they're being really rude. So when they're condescending. No, uh, here uh, the um, the word, uh, um, for example, the, uh, is a is a neg uh, ad adjective condescending. Condescendent. Uh, oh, okay. It means it means a person who who is not strict about the attitude of other people, is very permissive, is not strict. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so they're very, they're very, mm -hmm. very different than in, than in English. Cause, so I can see where that would be very difficult for the Portuguese speakers then to realize. So, all right, let's go to number four. Uh, Wellington, could you read that one? Wellington, are you there? I know he was having yes. internet problems. Oh, good. Okay. I was like, oh, yeah. no, what about internet problems? Ah. Okay. <laughs> this Number toilet, four. This toilet is unisex. Everyone can use it. Um, F, suitable for both males and females. Perfect. So, uh, for example, in small companies, 
they will usually have a, a just a just a bathroom or a toilet, and it is uh, definitely um, unisex. And the larger the larger the company is, the they change it. So, all right. Yes. And uh, what are other things? Um, clothing. You could call, you could say certain items of clothing could be unisex. <coughs> and uh, I can't think of other things that could be unisex. That usually when you use the word unisex, it's something is that is normally separated, male and female, and but this certain item is not. So like a toilet. So, hairdressers, for example, sometimes. Excuse me. Hairdressers. Yes, yes, absolutely. Those are definitely unisex. Yeah, because there are some that only cut men and some that only cut women. Yeah. But then there's the the ones that cut it, any. You know, bring the person there. I'll take care of their hair. <laughs> yes, definitely. All right. Um, number five, um, Diana. Our company's products are stuck at every major electronic store. Okay, so in this one, because there's a K right here, we actually pronounce the this with a T. So our company's products are stocked stuck. at every major. Yeah, and oh. anytime, anytime you have a K here or a P, you'll have the same sound. Stocked. Talked. It's cut. Cut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, you can't really say it without the other words because it doesn't make sense. But all right. So what would stock to be? Uh, stock is available in a store. Yes. Available in a store. Perfect. All right. And um. Kako, could you read number six? Being a single mother and business woman can be extremely draining. Letter J, letter G, very tiring. Yes. So if you were, if something is very draining, it it it, it makes you very tired. Definitely. All right. Um. Okay, next one, um, Wellington. Yes, um, Lorraine always wants to start her own business. She finds the idea really empowering. Empow empowering. 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 Yeah. And this is own. Own, own business. Own, own business, yeah. Own business. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, feeling, okay, feeling that you are in control of your yes. life, health, etc. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Empowering. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, a question for you, just uh, using some of these words. Um, uh, Kako, is there something that you do uh, maybe every week that you find draining? When when Friday comes, I, f I feel that I am draining. Okay. You would say, For you would say, I, it, when Friday comes, I feel drained. Okay. When Friday comes, I feel drained. Mhm. Mm by the by 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 work by the okay. by the work. A, a drain, yeah. After a work week. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> that. That could totally be draining for a lot of people, I think. How about you, Diana? Um, is there a time that sometimes you feel drained, or that something can be extreme? Something is draining. Um, 
When I do exercise, I feel really drained. Oh, really? Okay. Usually, draining is 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 more of a and not really a physical, but it's a mental tiredness. Oh, it's only mental. Yeah. Mm, another situation. Yeah. So I think it would be different. Maybe after a uh, a really hard uh, study day. Okay. Yes. After after uh, so so you s feel drained after you have s after see see I want to do it this way after a work week after a study day <laughs> a di maybe a difficult study day. Hey, okay. and how about you, Wellington? When do you feel drained? Mm. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, sometimes when you argue with you, somebody, mm -hmm. and, After, uh -huh. and uh, f for example, when I argue with my my manager, for example, and mm -hmm. I I'm right, and she can she uh, in she uh, uh, put your faults she mm -hmm. and yes after this I sometimes I I felt I feel uh, drained mm -hmm. yeah that, that definitely drains me as well and yeah. <clears throat> for me it's after uh, after I spend a day with needy people <laughs> And so yeah. after a day with uh, needy people, and when I say needy, does anybody know what I mean when I say needy people? Needy. Uh, poor people or um, ill people that you that you help, for example. No, needy isn't really. It, I mean, yeah, in some respects, it is um, poor people and people that need help, and that I, that is absolutely correct. But when I am talking about this, when I say this, it's usually people who are emotionally needy. <clears throat> <laughs> yes. You know, they're like um, uh, me, 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 me. <laughs> you know. <laughs> or or um or complain 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 you know yeah. all day I have a, I, one of my best friends she's I, I just love spending time with her but yeah. there are the, there are times that I leave I leave drained because she complains yeah. all yeah. the time yes <laughs> yeah. like, it's like yeah. a vampire. sorry uh, go ahead Dana I you you only Fear the people. Say it again. You only hear the people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a vampire. Yes. <laughs> yeah. She, she, she's, she's uh, sucking, su su sucking your blood, your, uh -huh. your. <laughs> Your faults is your uh, your vitality. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, it, I mean, the, most of the people like that who have been my friends usually do not stay my friends very long. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> just because I I personally can't handle it. But um, all right. So yeah, so these are really good examples of how you can f something can be draining. So in this respect, you would say something is draining, but I feel drained. So drained. yeah, okay. so yeah, so th whatever it is, like spending a day with an emotionally needy person is draining, but I feel drained after. I spend the day with them, so that's one one difference. Okay, um, let's see. There was another question. 
Okay, so we talked about what, what is what is draining. Okay, what do you guys find empowering? So, uh, Kako, can you think of something that you find? Uh, maybe you. I feel I feel empowered when. I feel empowered when I am prepared for challenges. Hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. Okay. All right. And how about you, Diana? When do you feel empowered? Uh, I feel empowered when I um, I have to to take decisions on my work. Okay. So when I I have the 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 opportunity to make decisions. Oh, yeah. Make decisions at work. Perfect. Decisions at work. Okay. <laughs> at work. Okay. And uh, uh, Wellington, how about you? I am empowered. Uh, I feel empowered when I, I am talking about something that I lived. Yeah, when when uh, when I when am talking, talking when yeah, I am talking, talking about about something that I lived something you lived something I lived such as um like so like something about your past yes uh huh awesome okay yeah and uh, for me. I, I and I think it's a reason I've I've chosen to uh, do the freelance work that I I, I have is I feel empowered when uh, when um, I have <clears throat> when I have autonomy mm. uh, uh, to to choose my own uh, to choose uh, my own schedule <laughs> yes. or when I have autonomy mm. to you know. Um, to decide I'm going to work that day or I'm not going to work that day. Oh, that's <laughs> excellent, yes. <laughs> you know? So um, I, I had a, 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 I think some of you have heard about the job I had had before I came back to teaching full time and uh, we went through a period where as managers we were told we had to work from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. and we did this for about three or four weeks straight. <laughs> Yeah, and and I'm like it's 12 hours, you know. And the problem was, we'd get there at 5 a.m. and we didn't do anything. There was nothing to do until about eight or nine. <laughs> so it was like, really? Did you really make me do this? So, anyway, um, all right. So let's let's go on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna read paragraphs one through five of the article on the next page and find the information below. So we're gonna look for the number of self-employed women in Britain, the increase in female entrepreneurs in 2011 to 2013, the increase in male entrepreneurs in 2011 to 2013, the estimated number of mumpreneurs in Britain, their contribution to the economy, and the percentage of British mothers who would like to become mumpreneurs. Okay, so mums do the business. The number of female entrepreneurs who juggle work and looking after their children is growing fast. So, uh, Kako, could you read the, this first paragraph? <clears throat> Some business women love being described as a mumpreneur, enjoying the fact that they combine running a business with looking after their children. Others hate it and complain that it is patronizing and unprofessional. So be careful so be careful where you use it. Thank you. Uh, uh, Diana, could you read number two? Okay. 
The word has not come from no, from nowhere. 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 Oh, nowhere. The number of self-employed women is rising at nearly three times the rate of men. In Britain, there are no more than one. It's one dot. Or one point. point. One point. point. Two million self-employed women in full and part-time okay. work. So women. So women. Women. Oh. women. women. Okay. <clears throat> okay. The number of female entrepreneurs increased by 9.6% in 2011-2013 compared with a 3.3% rise for men according to the Office for National Statistics. Yeah. So, uh, so 2011 to 2013. Okay. So usually when we have this dash, we will use the, the preposition to. Okay. okay, Wellington, can you read number three? Okay. An estimated uh, 300,000 uh, 300, 300, 300, women are mompreneurs, according to Mompreneurs UK, and they contribute 7.4 billion to the economy each year. The support network found that almost 90% of imams would like to start their own enterprise. Okay, so instead of set, set we'd say 7.4. Seven, 7, seven, okay, 7.4. 7. 7. I think that's mm -hmm. as, uh, another language. And then and this is contribute is how we pronounce it. So we okay. pronounce the, the middle part is the stress, contribute instead contribute. of contribute. Yeah, perfect. Contribute 7.4 billion. All right. Um, but is the term condescending? Businessmen with children are rarely referred to as dadpreneurs and entrepreneur is unisex. So why would the need, need for the extra so why the need for the extra label? Um, Kako, could you read number five? Laura Rigney, managing director of Mumpreneur UK and mother of three boys aged between six and nine that the term simply recognizes the extra challenges a self-employed mother faced. For these female entrepreneurs, their businesses, their business, businesses are run and structured around their children. It can be very draining and the busiest time is often at night once the children have gone to sleep. So we provide a support network for those women. We spoke to two mompreneurs. All right, thank you. And um, Diana, could you read about Vanessa Pinkney, 41 years old. Vanessa is the co-founder of Fish Pink, creators of luxury leather bags. The former retail buyer for Arcadia has two children under sand. Her business partner, Helen Fish, Fish here? Fish here? Oh, I don't know. Peach, peachy. Fishy, a former buyer for Harrods, has twin dollars. Their bags are now stocked in a number of stores. Okay, so remember their bags are now stocked. Oh, sorry. Stocked. Sorry, stock. Not a problem. No. That, that's why we come to class, right? So we get yeah, the feedback. Yeah. So, Wellington. <clears throat> okay. We both knew a buying life wasn't flexible around having kids. So we set up our own business supplying handbags. Last year, we started designing and producing our own brand, 
I embrace the term mompreneur. The whole point of doing business was setting up set setting setting it up around the children. I can email factories in the morning, Skype while the kids are at school, and make sure I'm back to pick them up from school. If I had a proper nine to five job, I would have had to put them in after school care. I work in my kitchen, my own little empire. Perfect. Okay, so there was one pronunciation I want to go with you, go over with you. When you have the W H together, it is whole. 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 Okay. So whole. basically, the W is silent, so it's whole. A whole the whole point. Okay. okay. Now we've got Lorraine Smith. I'll read the first paragraph, and you can read the second. So Lorraine left her job as an accountant in order to concentrate on her company. GTPB Natural, an online business offering natural and organic skin and hair care products. She has two children. Kako, can you read the next one? Before I had to put my daughter in nursery from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day, I didn't really have a relationship with her. I was the woman who saw who saw her at nights and at the weekends and was always telling her off. Now, now I work more, but I can bring the kids to work if I need to. There is stuff in the offs for them to do. I can take my kids to school and pick them up. I think being a mompreneur is really empowering. I can do my own thing and still be a mom. It's about flexible working. Sometimes I can be up till 3 a.m. working. Yeah, working when the kids are asleep. <laughs> So, exactly. Yeah, they, they are they are ad admirable people. Uh huh. Who who can who can juggling different activities at the same time. Mm hmm. And be su be successful at it too. So that's the big one. Um, are there any words or phrases in here that you guys do not know? Well, it's from the beginning. Anything here? Where is pick them up? Uh, pick them up. So where's that at? Pick. Okay, so that's in the second part. Um, to pick pick them up, it's a phrasal ver verb, and what they do is the kids wait at school, and uh, the mom comes with her car and takes them takes them from school. Ah, uh, okay. So you can pick someone up at the airport. You pick maybe pick your husband up at work. So um, that's what that is. Any other uh, words or phrases? Uh, the phrase uh, nine to five job is regular. Is normal? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Nine In fact, there was job. a. In fact, there's a movie. In the. I think it's from the 80s, um, called Work, uh, 9 to 5, and they have the song, Working 9 to 5, and it was actually, it was a big hit, um, mm -hmm. and uh, it was the, the, the stars who, who played that movie, in the movie, was, in that movie were really popular at the time, um, I think it was Jane Fonda, Dolly Parton, and somebody else, I can't remember. It was, I, it was somebody Tomlin, I think. Um, okay. But a very, I don't know if you, it's 1980, so it's a really old movie. Um, let's see. But it's a real fun movie, too, if you guys, if you like the older movies. And it's basically about um, em empowering women in the workplace. And they had a, a, a really bad boss, and they were able to kind of um, 
change change things in their office. So, but it's a it, if you guys ever look for a really fun movie, that might be one that might be interesting. So, Feature. made in eighties. Yeah. Uh, literally, what would be nine to five? It would be nine hours, five days a week. Mm -hmm. It would be nine to five, nine a.m. to five p.m. Monday through Friday. Ah, okay, okay. And which you. is which is also something when we talk about a nine to five life or a nine to five job, we also might use the word he has banker banker's hours. Because <clears throat> bankers a lot of times will work from nine to five. So. Okay. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Uh, here in Brazil, the commercial uh, journey is generally from 8 to 5 with an hour lunch. Yeah, and that's how it actually in re reality it is for a lot of people as well. Um, that it is at 8 to 5 or even 7 to 4 but there are some people that actually do work 9 to 5 or they might might work 8 30 to 5 or something like that and take us a, a lunch um, so um, all right any other words okay so we have these phrasal verbs we've got set up pick them up put them in uh, put my daughter in nursery. Nursery, telling tell her off, pick them up and be up. Does any do you guys know what tell her off means? Uh, like uh, uh, when she when the mom is doing something, mm -hmm. she she always said. Uh, said to her child to uh, go out. Uh huh. Yeah, it's basically to scold, be quiet, <laughs> and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Now, in American English, we actually do not use. Uh, well, we use this idiom. I mean, this phrasal verb, but we use it different. And so, in this respect, it's when the when the mother is is scolding. Um, in American English, we what we use this word when you have possibly two two girls who are angry with each other, and one tells the other off. It tells her exact everything that's that's wrong with her. <laughs> so it's kind of an argument type thing. But in British English, when they're talking about the parents scolding their children, they use this uh, phrasal verb, tell her off, or tell them off. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and, that's right, we got to look at these up here. Does anybody remember the number of self-employed women in Britain? <laughs> No. No. Uh, any? Okay. Six percent. Oh, one, sorry. No, it's one point two million. But uh, does it say what the percentage is? No, teacher. I I thought it was uh, six percent of the population. Yeah. I. Yeah. No. What is it? What is the increase in female entrepreneurs in 2011 to 2013? Anybody have that one? Nine point something. Nine percent. Yeah. So technically, ten percent if you round up. <laughs> nine is nine point six percent. So what is the increase in male entrepreneurs uh, in 2011 to 2013? Over three percent. Yes. So and that is actually three point three percent. Did I see see Javier come in? Who did I see? Or is that or is that Jose? Who did I see come in? Okay, somebody came in and left. Okay. Uh oh wait, and number four, the estimated number of mumpreneurs in Britain. Three hundred thousand. 
Three hundred thousand, exactly. Okay. And what is their contribution to the economy? Seven point four billion uh, pounds yes. a year. Mm -hmm. Which is uh, quite a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. And what is it? What is the British percentage of British mothers who would like to become mumpreneurs? Ninety percent. Ninety percent. That kind of surprises me, um, because I have talked to a lot of ladies who are mothers, and I've told them about different um, like job opportunities they could do from home. Um, and um, and most of the ladies I've t talked to, they're like, oh, but I want to get away from my kids. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, so, Diana, as a woman, would you be a mompreneur? I, I don't like, wouldn't like to, to uh, have kids in this moment, but if I have kids in one moment, I would like to be a mompreneur. Oh, you would like to, okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, my sister is technically as well. She... Um, doesn't have a lot of time to do any work, but next in the fall, uh, come September, all three of her children will be in school, and so cool. she's going to be taking two or three days. And she's a free a freelance writer, and yeah, so she, <laughs> yeah, so she's going to take um, uh, start doing work to build up her writing, and um, and so she will be a mom, mompreneur, but uh, um, she has to wait for her kids to get older because she can't do it. <laughs> she can't juggle it like some women. So, Kako, um, if you were a woman, would you be a mompreneur? No, teacher. Maybe I, I would prefer to have a a stable mm -hmm. uh, employment mm -hmm. rather than to be a mompreneur. Mm -hmm. Okay, or or just an entrepreneur. Okay, a sta so stable employment is one word. Another one you could work use is uh, secure, secure employment. Okay, and then another one that a lot of people say that they want, and that you cannot get this with. Um, uh, all, all of a sudden, I, th this phrase left me. Oh no, you cannot get this with um, uh, oh, okay, I got it. <laughs> you cannot get it with an entrepreneur and that's a steady income. So I think a lot of people <laughs> those are the three reasons, either stable or secure employment or steady income. So, how about you, uh, Wellington? Would you be a dadpreneur, or uh, or an entrepreneur, or are you? <laughs> Maybe I think uh, it's a good it's good for Buffy um, for Buffy uh, is um, to do yeah no. That no, I think. Uh, hello. Hello. I. Hi. I uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. I I I, th I think it's good. I think it's good for to do different things. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it is not uh, when a a a, a mother uh, is in her home. Uh, only doing all, all in caring her uh, their childrens her childrens uh, I think it's not very good some sometimes sometimes because mm -hmm. uh, maybe she can she can be a part of the the world mm -hmm. uh, far away the world and doing mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. true things. Maybe it's good 
I, I, I think, uh, but uh, with uh, less trouble. Tr <laughs> uh-huh. I uh, very good. I just noticed the time. All of us were very um, intrigued enough that we didn't realize that we're f six minutes past time. So yes, yes true. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank you all for your participation. I hope you learned some new words, and I hope to see you in another class. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, teacher. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks.